All right, so in this video, I want to show you a technique I used in my recent Warrior Composite for blending two images together to make the background, and also how I made it look as though the Warrior really was kneeling on the grass despite having been photographed in the studio. And this technique involves a very simple but powerful use of brushes within Photoshop. So to kick things off then, I'll go to the File menu, choose Open, navigate to where I've got the two background images, which are these two raw files just here. So I'll highlight them both and click on Open. Because they're raw files, that means they'll open up in the Camera Raw dialog. This one here I want to use because I like this ridge line just here. So we'll use this image and all I'll do is just go to the profile and choose adaptive color, just something really basic. This one here I like because we've got these hill rolling in from the right hand side coming down to the left and this one on the left coming in to the right and kind of intersecting in this part here and there's lots of stuff going on in the background. That one I'll use so we'll just go to adaptive color on that as well. I'll highlight both of them and then send them over into Photoshop. Let me just go to this one here, this ridge line, because I just want that to be a little bit straighter. So what I'll do is just go to the free transform. But first of all, let me just unlock that layer. Then I'll go Command or Control and T to get free transform. I'll put my cursor outside of the bounding box. And if I press down and drag up and down, I can start to rotate it. I'll just eyeball it. That's all it needs to be, just an approximate level horizon line just there. Something like that is looking good to me. Obviously, when I rotate it, we've now got these transparent areas going around, so I just need to expand it. So I'll click on this upper left-hand corner, hold down the Shift and Option or Shift and Alt, drag it to make it expand, something like that. All right, happy. I'll use the Move tool and drag this over now onto the other image, but I'll hold down the Shift key and then release so it adds it right into the middle. Let me just now use the Move tool to drag it down just a little bit. Let's just lower the opacity so I can check where it is. Lower that opacity down and zoom in. So what I want is the ridge line to be kind of across here. So these two hills on the sides there disappear behind it. So let's have a look. Drag it down. Just about see the ridge line just going across there. If I bring up that opacity, look. There it is. So probably around about there will work for me. Cool. Let's take the opacity all the way back up to 100. Now I don't need this top half here of the original ridge layer image. So I'm gonna get my rectangular marquee tool and drag out a selection and bring it down so it goes just below that ridge line. So you can see now, I'm gonna zoom in, we're below the original ridge line just there. I'll then use a layer mask. Now ordinarily, if I click to add a layer mask, what that's going to do is fill this top area here in white and the area outside will be black, but I actually want it the other way around. I want this selected area to be black so it hides all this stuff at the top. I only want to see the bottom part. So to do that, to get adding a layer mask to behave in the opposite way, all I'll do is come down to the new layer mask icon just here, but I'll hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and then click. So now look, the top half of the mask has been filled with black, the bottom half which you can see because it's been filled with white. All right, so there we go. So there's the ridge line, and they've got the hills disappearing off behind it. Now, obviously, that doesn't look realistic because the ridge line now, because we use that rectangular marquee tool, is exactly straight. It is pin, pin sharp, not looking good. And this is where the brushes really come into it now. Very, very simple, but incredibly effective. And I'll just zoom in so we've got this area just here. So I'll go to the brush tool over in the toolbar. And then the options bar at the top of the screen, where we've got the brush, I'll press on the arrow to the side of it to bring up all the other brushes that we get access to. And what I'm looking for is this one here, this folder called Legacy Brushes. Now, if you don't see that, just go to the gear icon and you'll have access to it just here to append it or to add it in so that you've always got access to them. And these Legacy Brushes are ones that have been in Photoshop for a long time. And the one I want to get access to, if I come down here, is this one this grass brush. There's two grasses. They've got dune grass and just the grass brush. The grass is the one that we want because that brush has been made up of three individual strokes. So you've got from the bottom here, two strokes going up and out, and then one stroke in the middle. That's ex exactly what we want for this here because it kind of gives us more to work with. So I'll choose that grass brush just there. When I've chosen the brush, I'll then come over to the brush settings, and this is what we've got. In this area here is a preview of what that brush will behave like 
with the current setting. So I need to change it. So we'll go to brush tip shape first of all, and we've got this spacing bar here. I need to bring the spacing a bit tighter because obviously the grass here in the original image is a lot tighter, so I need to kind of match that. So maybe around about there would be good. We don't need transfer. We definitely don't need color dynamics because we're going to be using the brush on a layer mask, so it's going to be used in black or in white. Um, next one we'll come to is shape dynamics. We've got size jitter. At the moment, that's up at 100. I'm going to take that down to maybe around about 50 would be fine. That basically means that every time you lift off and brush uh, and press down and brush, it will vary the size of the brush by 50%. Obviously, the higher the, the size jitter, the more it will vary the size. But I'll, I'll have it around about 50. We've got angle jitter as well, so it will vary the angle of it. I don't want that to be too high, so I'll bring that down just a little bit, 7%, 8%, something like that. We've also got access to scattering where we can increase the scattering, but we need that to be quite compact. So I'll bring the scattering down to maybe around about 40-ish, something like that will be fine. All right, so this is how we're going to use it. I need to bring back part of this area that's covered in black because you remember when I made that original selection with the rectangular marquee tool, I brought it just below the ridge line, which means now that above this white line here, there is going to be some of the original ridge line. And I'm going to bring that back using this brush. So when I use the brush, it's going to bring it back in the shape of this brush. To bring it back, I need to use the brush with a white foreground color to reveal it. And this is what we'll do. Let's go back to the normal view. Zoom in on here. Look, and I'm just going to use the brush. I can vary the size of it with my left and right square bracket keys. But I'll probably leave it like that for now. And watch this look. Start to brush over. Look at that. You see how it's bringing it back in the shape of the brush, but that brush looks like grass that would really have been there. So incredible. I mean, it's incredibly effective, but just work and works so well. I love it. Use this a lot. And all I'm doing now, look, is as I'm brushing, I'm lifting off, pressing down, lifting off and pressing down. And you can see that uh, kind of preview of what the brush is as I'm doing that. You can see how it's varying the angle, varying the size. Really effective. So I'll just come across, all the way across. In fact, to save time, let me just zoom out. And I'll put a brush stroke over on the left, hold my shift key down, come over to the right-hand side, all the way over to the right, and just put a brush stroke down there. Look, and it's filled it all in now. So now, look, when I zoom in, look at that. <laughs> you would never know. You would think that is exactly how it was. Let's zoom out. You, unbelievable. So simple, but so incredibly effective. Now, this technique here I used exactly the same way when I brought the warrior who'd been photographed in the studio when I did a cutout and brought him in. Obviously, I had to add in a simple shadow, but the shadow combined with using the brush, incredible, absolutely incredible, made him look as if he was already there. So what I'll do is look, let's go to the, let's just close the brush down. I'll go to file and open, and I'll navigate to where I've got the raw file of the original studio shoot of the warrior. So let's get the crop tool. Let's just expand the sides out so you can see. Look, that is the original studio shoot. Now, I'm not going to go and do loads on him uh, because that's not what this video is for. So just to bring out a bit of detail, I'll just go to the profile section, choose browse, and I'll use the Adobe neutral profile. I like to use that because it kind of flattens it out so that I can then go in later on and selectively apply contrast into areas that I want to make them stand out more. So that's a good starting point for me. I'll click on open. That brings it into Photoshop, and I need to do a cutout. Lots of ways that I could do the cutout. I could spend ages going through this to get all the fine hairs and everything. I don't do that now. I use new technology to do that for me. So what I will do is I'll just go and get a simple uh, selection tool from the toolbar. We've got the object selection tool here. That then gives us all these options in the options bar. And you can see, look, already, look, if I bring my cursor in, Already, it's recognizing there is a subject there, and it's a pretty good cutout look. That would make a very good cutout. Apart from, you can see the top of this fake sword here, this stand-in sword, which was changed later. You can see how it's missing a bit of it. So what I'll do, come to the options bar, where it says select subject. I'll press on the down arrow and choose cloud, detailed results, and then press down where it says select subject. So what's going to happen there is that's going to be sent up into Adobe's servers. It's going to look at it, see exactly what needs to be made a selection of, and then send it back to you. And then you'll have the active selection, which you can see is really good. 
You can see it's even picked up now, look, the top of that fake sword there or the stand-in sword. So I'm not going to do much on this other than just add a layer mask. And let's get the move tool. Click on the thumbnail and let's drag him over into that new scene that we've created. I'll zoom out a little bit, get the move tool and just reposition him. Now, obviously, like I said, I did add in shadow into here, but just look how effective using this brush is now to make it look as if his foot and his knee and everything is kind of resting on that grass. I'll go to the layer mask here of the cutout and make sure that's active. I'll go back to my brush tool, and obviously, because I've not used any other brush since then, the one we used originally, the grass one, is the one that's still active, which is great. But this time, when I use the brush, rather than painting in white to reveal, I'm going to paint in black, because I want to hide parts of the warrior's foot and his clothing to reveal the grass below. So I'm going to use the exact same brush, but this time with a black foreground color. So again, I'll use those right and left square bracket keys to bring up the size of the brush. But look at this, look now. Brushing over his foot, just there, look. How effective is that for making it look as if he was originally stood in that grass? I mean, that, I just love it. Really vary the size of the brushes, look. <laughs> I love it. So simple, but so effective. Let's just do some of his clothing. Just here. And like before, I'm just lifting off, pressing down, lifting off, pressing down to vary the size of it, just to make it look even more realistic. So just carry on just over the side just here. But, I mean, you can imagine now, look, now that I've just very, very quickly done some brush strokes, adding in that shadow, it really does look like my friend Gez was photographed on location just brilliant. Now, this is just one small part of the entire compositing workflow that I go through from start to finish in a class I've put together for the free Photoshop Creativity Virtual Summit, which is coming up in just a few days. The class is called The Warrior Project Meets Photoshop of the Future, and there's a ton of stuff I go through showing how I put it all together, including the behind the scenes of the studio shoot, going through the lighting setup. Like I said, you can watch all of this completely for free just by grabbing a free pass using this link, which I've also added into the description of the video. And having a free pass means you'll be able to see my other class called Masking Unleashed, and of course, all the other classes from all the other instructors. Well, that's all I've got for you for this video. So if you have any questions or comments, please make use of the comment section below. Click on like if you've got something from this. And if you haven't already, click on subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.